Welcome to Veterinary Anesthesia uh, Standard Canine and Feline Endotracheal Intubation. This is part two. And in this segment, we will talk about endotracheal tubes, the normal and uh, safe management and handling of the tube, a little bit about the tube itself. This is a standard 6.0 endotracheal um, tube, tracheal tube, and um, at, the, at the tip of the end of the tube, we have the endotracheal cuff. This is the cuff that allows a tight seal in the trachea as it's placed. Uh, we want to take extra special care not to overinflate this tube based on the animal that we have. Uh, every animal has different endotracheal sizes in, in diameter, and uh, a lot of damage can be caused by overinflating this tube. So we want to take care to be safe and not harm the animal. This is the smaller tube that goes to the cuff, the external cuff. And contrary to popular belief, the, um, the way that this cuff palpates and feels as far as distension does not have anything to do with how distended the cuff is at this end. That's something that's very important and I'd, I'd like to demonstrate to you that you should always measure how much air that you're putting into that cuff. So this is roughly five centimeters there, or five millimeters of air. That's 10 millimeters of air. And if you can see, um, the cuff is really very inflated. If our tube size was estimated to be a 6.0 and we inflate it that much, it could put a lot of pressure on the inside lining of the trachea. And in some cases, it can actually cause a pressure necrosis on the lining of that trachea and cause problems after anesthesia. So we don't want to do that. You want to test your machine, and we'll go over that in another segment, uh, and test your seal after, once it's placed, and always start off with small increments of air. Once we know that five milliliters of air is gonna inflate that cuff roughly about halfway, we don't wanna go any more than that. And then if you're testing to see if you have a seal once it's placed in your animal, you want to go at one millimeter increments of air at a time, not more than that. And then check your machine, check your seal. When we talk about larger tubes, this is, for example, 11.0 larger tube for, say, a Great Dane. Um, the principles are the same. And um, normally you would use a 12 cc syringe or 20 cc syringe to inflate this cuff. But once you have it moderately inflated, you always wanna go by small increments when you're checking the seal. With the smaller endotracheal tubes, this is for example, a 4.0 millimeters in diameter endotracheal tube. You want to be extremely cautious and careful about inflating this cuff. Cats and small dogs, toy breed dogs, are very sensitive to the amount of air that's in that endotracheal cuff. And so if we put roughly three millimeters of air into this cuff, you can see that it's largely inflated. In this situation, if we're checking the seal on our, on our machine and our animal, we wanna go at even smaller increments when you're adjusting it at half milliliter to a milliliter increments. There have been instances in veterinary medicine where those, the cuff, the endotracheal cuff has been inflated, overinflated, caused pressure necrosis on the lining of the trachea and those animals have succumbed and died from improper use of the endotracheal cuff. So we don't need to think safety for ourselves and safety for the animal. I'm gonna take a look at the laryngeal model again to show you how normally when you look into a lightly anesthetized animal, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see the epiglottis folded over the opening of the trachea and um, and you can either take that endotracheal tube 
and as you're passing it to, to uh, advance it into the trachea, you can take and use the tube to pull the epiglottis out of the way and then pass your tube into, of course I have to open it, and then pass your tube into the trachea. Sometimes that's not very easy and it, depending on the animal and the breed, we would need to use what's called a laryngoscope. This is a standard canine small animal laryngoscope. It does have a light source on the end. And then you would take the blade of the laryngoscope and gently, knowing that this is a metal object, you want to be gentle, <clears throat> but you would take it and just use it to tease that epiglottis away. And at the same time, go ahead and pass your endotracheal tube into the trachea. It's very important to be gentle on your animal. We don't want to cause any kind of um, unnecessary swelling, edema, or trauma in that area. And when looking and measuring on your animal, we would want to make sure that we would take our tube and measure it. If we're talking about a dog, and say this is the thoracic inlet. This is our great dog. But if we look at the thoracic inlet as being this area right here, it would be where the trachea would go into the chest cavity. This is a thoracic inlet. So when we measure our trach endotracheal tube, we are going to measure it so that it does not pass that endotracheal, or that, uh, excuse me, that uh, thoracic inlet. Because if it does, it's going to end up going down one of the main stem bronchi, and that is not ideal. So we're gonna measure it. We'll measure the tube and tie our fixating gauze or uh, line that we will be using to fix it to the dog's mouth. And then we will secure it around the muzzle. And that concludes our part two of endotracheal intubation of the canine and the feline.